College soccer on the SEC Network tonight from the Auburn University Soccer Complex where the Auburn Tigers play host to the Vanderbilt Commodores. A look at the road to Orange Beach in the SEC Tournament. Vanderbilt on top at 19 points, three ahead of both South Carolina and Texas A&M. Auburn in a three-way tie with LSU and Ole Miss at 10 points apiece. With Mac Matthews, I'm Andy Bertram. Glad to have you with us tonight. Significant win streaks, and they're playing well right now. They sure are, Andy. Vanderbilt, after a tough loss to Florida State to start, has been tearing everybody apart. They're on a 14-game unbeaten streak. They could not be hotter coming into Auburn tonight. Significant wins, first time since 1997 against Florida. Top 15 RPI wins against Mississippi State and Tennessee. And they're going with a redshirt freshman that leads the team. And she is tremendously important to this team. Tremendous athlete. And obviously, you can see from her stats, this team has got to have her tonight. Auburn started the year 9-0 in non-conference play. Now, the Tigers have righted the ship of late. They did it with offense early, Mac. Of late, though, after winning their last two matches 1-0, they've won it with defense. That's right. They started off just tearing everything up, setting new records and a couple of key injuries, and they've had to restructure their formation and their personnel, and now they're back in the hunt. Look at Bree Foles as one of Auburn's keys, and she, along with Haley Hopkins, two really good matchups for tonight. Now, they play different positions, and they're different styles of players as well. Absolutely. You couldn't have more of a contrast between two incredible players who are so important for their team. Haley Hopkins plays up top. They look to find her early. She is a phenomenal athlete. Love watching her run. Bree Foles, incredibly technical, a much smaller player, very quick. Very, very smart. Both of these young ladies are going to have to have great games tonight, Andy. Should be a terrific battle. It's Auburn and Vanderbilt when we come back on the SEC Network. The 2018 Nissan Titan, backed by America's best truck warranty, which covers more than any other truck in its class, inside and out, bumper to bumper. Now's the time to save with exclusive offers like this. If you're going to be on this team, being ready won't cut it. You've got to be the readiest. Holiday Inn Express, proud sponsor of SEC Saturday Night on the SEC Network. Head coach Karen Hoppe in her 20th season picking up her 300th victory last week against Missouri. Honored before tonight's game against Vanderbilt. 15 seasons with 10 plus wins, including this season. Auburn trying to get to that 12 in the last 13 seasons to make the NCAA tournament. And here's the starting lineup tonight for the Auburn Tigers. Yeah, not a lot of changes coming out of the Missouri game. Auburn, well, I guess one change, Andy. They've gone to a 4-2-3-1 now, experimenting with a few different formations. Uh, really critical addition, Emmy Craven in the back four. Auburn's been playing in the three-back system most of the season. The head coach for the Vanderbilt Commodores, he's in his fourth season, and this program has progressed every year under Darren Ambrose after coming in from Penn. Yeah, he has done exactly what he promised when he came <laughs> in. <laughs> you cannot, you know, you're, you're as good as your as your win-loss record. And uh, Coach Ambrose has done a tremendous job moving this team forward, and he has some athletes on the field tonight, starting with Haley Hopkins up top. We've already talked about her briefly. Uh, critical goalkeeper, DeMarchi, in the back. She is uh, a statistical leader in pretty much every category. I'm really interested to see Dorsey, their right center back. Uh, great athlete, and she locks down that entire side, Andy. So, should be an interesting battle tonight between Auburn and Vanderbilt. The Commodores, despite the fact that the Commodores just does not have a loss, just a three-point lead in the SEC standings right now. And they have uh, done something that nobody saw coming. And they've, uh, you know, if they get a win tonight, they pretty much lock this thing up. Uh, you know, with, they, they'll stay on top of the, of the leaderboard. Uh, Auburn, on the other hand, has got some work to do, Andy. They, you know, with a loss tonight, uh, they could be in danger of mm -hmm. not making the SEC tournament. Top 10 teams in the SEC go to Orange Beach. A win tonight, Auburn could move up to fifth. A loss, they could drop tonight. So you can see how everything is jumbled together. And Vanderbilt, as we mentioned, with no losses in the league, just a three-point lead over Texas A&M yeah. and South Carolina. So 
a lot to play for for the last three games. That's right, and it tells you just how competitive the SEC is. When you, you're unbeaten in SEC play and you only have a, a hold on it by three points, uh, their record, what, 13 wins, Auburn at 11, and they're separated by seven places, only two wins. Exactly. It's a, it's a tremendously tight race, and this is when it's fun to play. It's fun to call these games. A lot of pressure. We'll see what happens under that pressure tonight. What to watch for tonight? Trends to watch. Vanderbilt has allowed just four goals on the road this season. Auburn has been dynamite offensively at home this year. They sure have. They, they love playing here. They're going to need a few goals tonight, although they've really moved back into a more defensive formation. Uh, it's something that Coach Hop is very comfortable coaching. This team is very comfortable playing in this. They, they, they roll up a lot of 1-0 wins, and we'll uh, see if that plays out tonight. Tigers in the white kits. Vanderbilt the black kits tonight. As we're about ready for action. Just three matches remaining for these two teams, so as a matter of fact, the the, uh, the the tournament in Orange Beach opens a week from Sunday. That's how close we are to the start of postseason play. Yeah, that's uh, going to all fall into place very, very quickly for somebody, and other people are going to lose out. Neither team wants that to happen. We're at the Auburn University Soccer Complex, Auburn and Vanderbilt tonight. And the Commodores with their first counter of the match send it up the sideline. And Auburn trying to turn it around. Commodores with pressure early. Send it back to Saltmarsh. Saltmarsh sends it forward. Trying to get it to the feet of Hopkins, and they do. And out of bounds. Up the, the, the touch line. The throw for the Tigers. Milan Sun sends it forward. You've watched these two teams as far as the style of play is concerned. What would we've talked about Auburn all season long? What do you think of this Vanderbilt team? Oh, they're a lot of fun to watch. They're playing the same formation that Auburn started with. They're in a 3-5-2, so they really bully the midfield, and they look to find. It's fascinating to me. As much as they are a midfield building team, they look to find Hopkins, Welch, and. Uh, tonight, Kelly's feet very, very early up top. Now, Reagan Kelly, number 24, a player that has missed seven straight matches, but is back in the starting lineup here tonight. That's right. She got injured in that uh, really good loss, if you can have one, a 0-1 loss to Florida State, and is finally back to full form. Tremendous player up top. Haley Whitaker across midfield. And the Commodores the other way. Up the sideline and send it far down the sideline, and that'll get over the end line for Auburn. Off the foot of Leila Azari, a 5'5 sophomore out of Jacksonville, Florida. The biggest contrast, Andy, that we'll see tonight is Auburn's gone to a four-back system, and so they're going to try to create width by getting their outside defenders up the field, especially Alyssa Melanson. Whereas Vanderbilt's going to try to bring that out of their midfield with only three backs. And so we'll uh, we'll see who can rule the wide spaces tonight. Freshman Emmy Craven drops it back. Troutman sends it forward for Auburn. And the first time we see the ball at the feet of Lauren DeMarchi, junior out of Hudson, Ohio. Near side for Azari. Lofts it forward. A little bit past Melanson with Hopkins on her back. Houchin, now Melanson with the left foot. And out of bounds at midfield, over the touch line at midfield. What a luxury for Melanson to have Houchin beside her. She's only a sophomore, but boy, does she act like she's a senior. Uh, in Vanderbilt, as you can see, uh, they're not a fluke to be on top of the standings right now. Third in goals per game. They'll need a few tonight. Accidental touch there by Trevor Aycock will give the ball back to the Commodores. Junior out of Marietta, Georgia, had the game winner the last time Auburn played at home, and that was against Georgia. Auburn's won its last two matches 1-0. The game winners from Aycock against Georgia, and then Sunday, Whitaker with the game winner at Missouri. 
what a great run she went on. Looked like uh, what Ole Miss did to Auburn. Yes. <laughs> Good point. Uh, great finish by her after taking on four different players. Came in the 70th minute. The, the, the goals, matter of fact, by Acott came deep in that game as well. And there is Whitaker. Touches back to Milansan. And Whitaker. It's a double team. Too far for Milanson, who sends it off of Hopkins and out of bounds. The throw to Ange Daly. Trying to touch it to Milanson and too far. About four and a half minutes into this one tonight. No score between Auburn and Vanderbilt. Glad to have you with us tonight on the SEC Network. Headed forward by Kalen Boyd. Back to the midfield mark where Grace Jackson runs it down for Vanderbilt. Sends it forward and Troutman drops back for Auburn. Nice touch by Troutman. Two brief folds. Back to the middle of the defensive back for Vanderbilt, Azari forward for the Commodores. Serves it into the box. Vanderbilt got ahead on that one, but a little too far, and LeBeau will send it out. And both teams not taking any chances, Andy. You can see when they get the ball at their feet anywhere near midfield, they're lumping it long right now, trying to settle into the game. Auburn can't allow that kind of service very often. Haley Hopkins, great in the air. And Kalen Boyd. That Boyd is 5'7", Hopkins is 5'8", so they've got some size on their front line. That's right. They uh, much taller than Auburn's defensive players, and uh, they've taken advantage of that throughout the season. Folds. Trying to work out of some traffic. Vanderbilt there for the turnover. For the Auburn back line, Milanson to Sarah Houchin. Auburn switches the field, and Troutman sends it forward. Commodores in front of their bench. Pinball action near midfield. Olivia Dedells. Now Troutman working against Hopkins. You can see her speed and physicality right there. She's uh, not to be messed with. If you've got the ball, you, you might want to get rid of it. Even that far forward for Auburn. Yeah, she will come all the way back and put pressure in that midfield, going to a six-player midfield. She's just that physical, and, uh, and Auburn's going to have to sort that out. You can Again, you can see both teams just kind of dumping the ball long, looking to kind of win the, the field position game. Out of bounds, the throw for Vanderbilt. Commodores to the back line. Let's see if they reverse the field here. Nope, they'll stay on that side. This is really kind of a contest of who's going to settle the jitters the earliest and begin to really try to possess the ball out. Vandy seems committed to that now. And we'll see if Auburn can step up collectively as a team. Melanson stepping up against Azari as that one is deflected forward, and Houchin is there for Auburn. To the feet of Foles, but there's Azari again for, for the Commodores. Now Dorsey. Dorsey, the most consistent grade practice or on the pitch for head coach Darren Ambrose. She doesn't make many mistakes. Uh, I've watched her play quite a bit, and uh, her mistakes, she maybe makes one a game, uh, and they really depend on her as a, a place to build from in the back. Whitaker to Acock. I think she was looking for Daly to make the move forward, and it didn't happen. She sure was. Just a little miscommunication. Haley made the other run across the front, and she was expecting to see Daly take advantage of that space to her right. Falls at midfield. Right foot forward. 
DeMarchi comes out, cuts off Acock, and the throw by DeMarchi out to Azari. Sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida, in the Bulls school. Craven sends it out for Auburn. Vanderbilt keeps it in its defensive half. There is Dorsey out of Elkridge, Maryland. Schamberger for the Commodores to Dorsey. Trying to set up that front line, Hopkins. Don't you figure that every time she comes forward, she's going to have an Auburn Tiger in her back pocket? Absolutely. You can see that they've dropped Bree Foles into that back line to allow the center backs the freedom to try to take Hopkins out of the game. Never give her an inch to run. Folds near side for Melanson against Azari. And is able to get past Azari. Melanson, Acock tried to turn, but was unable to keep the ball at her feet. And you just saw a key for Auburn in the game, Andy. Melanson getting forward like that. There's a reason why she's the assist leader for this team. Even when they were playing in a three-back system, she was able to get forward like that. Now they're in a four-back system. It ought to be even easier. She has eight assists for the Tigers this year. Number three, Alyssa Melanson. Folds taken down. And a foul whistled against the Commodores. That was Madison Elwell, the sophomore from Ambler, Pennsylvania. She's got a hammer for a left foot, loves to get up that sideline. Bandy would be smart to continue to not let Bree Folds be the general in the midfield, even if they have to give up these kinds of free kicks. Third on the team in scoring with four goals and four assists this season. It's a balanced offensive attack this year for Vanderbilt as Craven sends it in for Auburn. Too far over the head of Whitaker and DeMarchi is out. And Vanderbilt has leaned on Simone Charlie for so many years. Tremendous player out of Spain Park. Oh what a my. track athlete. I don't know that I've ever seen anybody run like she does, but they became so focused on her attack I think Coach Ambrose loves having all the variability this year. No question about that. And teams became focused on Charlie as well. That's right. And they, they can't just focus anymore. Here's Folds with Acock forward. Folds in a double team, and the ball is taken away by the Commodores. Now forward, trying to get it to Boyd. But Troutman drops back to LeBeau. Double team, making a triple team, and Craven out of the pile for Auburn. You can see what Vanderbilt's trying to do. As soon as they win the ball in midfield, they're going to try to slot one of those forwards in. And Auburn is not going to let Hopkins have the ball at her feet. Over 33 minutes remaining in the first half, a scoreless first half. Matter of fact, neither team with a shot thus far. It's not surprising as both teams are trying to figure out where they can keep the ball. Nobody wanting to make the first mistake. Caroline Saltmarsh, a junior from Atlanta. With some room to run. Hopkins for the Commodores. Down the right flank with the turn and sends it over the top. And she has a, a almost unparalleled ability to get around that corner and then hit a really quick cross. She usually plays it on the ground. And if you're not tracking those front post and back post runners, you're in trouble. 11 goals. Four assists, 26 points, four multi-goal games, four game-winning goals this year. That's just part of the resume, man. That's right, four game-winning goals. The only player on the field that can equal or better that's Bree Folds with five. So what a great contest. Sarah LeBeau with 28 shutouts, sends it out for Auburn. That's 28 career shutouts, number two on the Auburn list. And two shutouts coming into it tonight. But boy, you got a shutout against this team. That's a tall, tall task indeed. It sure is. And speaking of good shutouts, uh, this last game that Vanderbilt played against South Carolina, oh. what a quality draw. A lot of times people don't understand ties in soccer, but boy, you have a great example there. Foul whistled against uh, Haley Whitaker for Auburn. Give the ball to the Commodores. The 5-1 freshman out of uh, Birmingham, Alabama, and Oak Mountain High School. She tortured a lot of high school teams in this state, and she, that first SEC goal, you could see how much it meant to her when she scored it. 
<laughs> against Missouri, and uh, I have a feeling it won't be anywhere near her last. Commodore is trying to, to set up its offense as Folds drops back for Auburn. Vanderbilt contains the pressure. Now to the back line for Vanderbilt. To the near side for Azari. Excuse me, Saltmarsh. With room. Saltmarsh. Forward for Hopkins with the shot on frame, but too hot. Auburn's made an interesting decision to drop this many players into the back line. That's why you see so much space for Vanderbilt to travel in the midfield. And they'll give Hopkins that shot from 20 all day long, trusting Sarah Lebeau to keep everything out of the net. Second shot of the night for Vanderbilt. Auburn does not have a shot yet against the Commodores. Auburn hasn't had many opportunities even so far. Now here's Melanson. Whitaker down the middle. Melanson against Saltmarsh. Into the box, but Auburn is unable to keep it in and over the touchline. And a throw coming up for Vanderbilt. Hopkins. Redshirted a year ago, medical reasons. Boy, has she burst on the scene this year for the Commodores. Down the right side, and this is Foles from the right flank. Boy, Acock got pushed in the back trying to go up for that pass. No foul whistled, and here's Vanderbilt the other way. You know, I just uh, stick with my old rule of keeping my mouth shut about uh, referee decisions in the box. Take another look at the cross from Folds. Oh, that's a nice push in the middle of the back for Acock. Yeah, Auburn has not exactly had the uh, the way of uh, the rub of the green to steal a, a, an expression in, inside the box in the last few games, starting with that Texas A&M game. And there, Vanderbilt will get the set piece here. And Auburn fans are wondering, well, if you're going to call that one there, why didn't you call it just a couple minutes ago at the other end? And if Auburn has done its scouting, they understand the left foot on Elwell. She can hit a hammer. It's reminiscent of an Auburn player who can do it with both feet, Ange Daly. Three state or a state championship and the three-time All-Stater in Pennsylvania as Elwell lines this one up. Chips it into the box on a hop, but LeBeau is there for Auburn. Oh, that's great service, curling that ball onto the six. Elected not to shoot a little too far out of her range, but nobody getting on the end of it. LeBeau punches it forward. Commodores have dominated the possession early in this one tonight. Drops it back, Saltmarsh. Goes right, flank for Azari. Served in, far post and headed to LeBeau, but we have a foul even before the shot. Yeah, the referee picked up on that particular push in the back. Very easy to see. But again, you can see Auburn is paying a price for a narrow formation right now. As Vandy's able to switch and get players in space, great service to the back post, but the push in the back on Troutman, referee's whistle stops the play. Commodores. Hopkins tried to send that one forward, but Auburn to the back line. Craven, at six foot two for Auburn. Sending it forward, headed up the sideline and over the touchline. 
throw for Auburn. Pressure by Vanderbilt on this throw in from Taylor Troutman. Number 17 out of Toms River, New Jersey. A goal and tied a career high with four assists this season. And a turnover off the throw, but then Vanderbilt with a turnover, and here's Milanson with some room. Nice move to get past Azari. Trying to serve in for Whitaker, being marked by Harriet. Whitaker with the shot, and another foul whistle against Haley Whitaker. Haley's not happy because initially there was a, a high boot that almost caught her right in the face, and then the little elbow, and, and then she threw her to the ground. So you can't, you, you can't do that. Myra Conti was the one that went to the turf, a sophomore of Woodbridge, Virginia, number five, five foot three. She towers over the five one Whitaker. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a great battle all night. Haley really kind of on her own. She and Trevor Acock taking turns being that lone forward. Acock from Foles through. And Vanderbilt able to send it over the touchline off of Myra Conti from Woodbridge, Virginia. Freshman All-SEC in the All-SEC tournament a year ago for the Commodores. Quick turnover gives the ball back to Vanderbilt. 24-35 remaining in the first. No score between Auburn and Vanderbilt. Commodores with the only two shots in the match. And here is Hopkins. Trying to slice it through to Kalen Boyd. Troutman dropping back for Auburn defensively. Emerges and sends it up the sideline. And Daly is whistled for a rather obvious foul. It's awfully hard to run through a player. No intent there. She's watching the ball, but uh, the referee's going to get you every time. Caroline Saltmarsh was the victim there. <laughs> it's the fifth foul against Auburn in the match, three against the Commodores. Into the box and uh, over the end line. The two shots by Vanderbilt have both been outside the box. And again, Auburn has elected to give them that space to play in. They better hope they don't come to regret it. If it just takes one well-placed shot, one time too yeah. many down the flank and get a cross off, Auburn's going to have to generate their own attack or Vandy's just going to continue to get more and more comfortable on the ball. Whitaker trying to take control here. With the cross, but loses control. Vanderbilt with the ball. Through the Auburn back line, and Craven will send it to LeBeau with Boyd bearing down. Has to get it out to the side for Melanson. That's really well and calmly done by a freshman who wasn't really expecting to play much this year and got thrown in against Texas A&M of all teams. Auburn lost defensive players in back-to-back -back games, Jalen Gadsden and Corey Loxley, and all of a sudden, at the same time, Emmy Craven was starting to emerge in practice and has found herself playing against A&M and in the lineup against Georgia and, and uh, Missouri. She's done a tremendous job of a physically imposing player. If there was anybody on Auburn's team that could match up with Hopkins, that's who it is. Boyd, and Auburn turns it around. And now the Commodores. To the near sideline, Azari. Azari back on the ball. And Melanson pokes it away. Craven now forward for Gianna Montini. Slices through to Ange Daly. Now Milanson. Daly trying to turn. She went down. She was looking for a foul. It didn't come. And here's Hopkins. Watch out for Hopkins. Down this flank. 
And they'll get their first corner of the night as it goes off of Houchin. That's the classic setup from Hopkins. She's going to push you all the way down that sideline, and Sarah Houchin was glad to let her roll out there and try to get that quick cross off. We'll see who takes this corner. Azari went over. They usually position two players to give them a short corner option. So we know Azari, and I can't tell who, there we go. Azari is now outside that corner area. And Elwell. that's Madison Elwell. That's right, lefty, she's gonna hit an in-swinger. Into the box, cleared out by Craven. Don't think that's the way they drew that one up. Don't think so, but maintain the possession nonetheless. Out of the pack. Is Ange Daly for Auburn. Forward, well nicely played by Acock. Maintains possession. Acock, Whitaker, couldn't quite get the control in the box. Acock again drops it back for Alyssa Melanson. Now reverses. Taylor Troutman. With the right foot, cuts it loose, but goes wide left. And that's what Auburn's got to do, Andy. I'm, I'm about to lose my mind <laughs> up here in the booth watching Auburn stay on one side. You can see it just took one switch, and all of a sudden Taylor Troutman is open for an excellent shot. She can bury it from distance. Auburn's first shot of the match. Under 20 minutes now remaining in the first. And DeMarchi. Acock working against Saltmarsh goes wide for Folds. Down the right flank. Leaves for Troutman. Pass one defender. Now drops it back for Folds. Serves it in. Whitaker trying to get it to her feet, unable to do so. And now we'll see the counter for Vanderbilt. Hopkins trying to make the turn. Near side for Azari. Azari sends it forward over everybody, and LeBeau on a couple hops gathers it in. Great work by Trevor Acock coming all the way back to pressure Azari and force that cross earlier than she wanted to. And Auburn's gonna have to decide how to defend those flank positions. Montini. The turn by the Commodores. Elwell in front of the Auburn bench. A throw for the Tigers. But a quick possession by Vanderbilt. As Hopkins sends it out. That will be a throw for Vandy. Haley Hopkins on the year, outstanding season, 11 goals, has third best in the SEC, four game-winning goals, also tied for third, and averaging about three-quarters of a goal a game. And her goal-to-shot ratio is stunning. Usually it's one to 10. Oh, a turnover, Boyd. Hopkins into the box. And a little too far down the flank. Flag was up. Coach Auburn had, yeah, 20th year for <laughs> Coach Hoppin, 300 victories for Coach. And I can tell you exactly what she was just telling her, her, her players to communicate better and keep that ball. They're a little too eager to lump it long right now. It can't be part of what their, their game plan is, and I'm sure she's telling, is it Rocio Sanders? Number 16 about to come into the match for Auburn. Sophomore out of Cocoa Beach, Florida, but first, the set piece from Emmy Craven. Into the box, and a foul whistled against Auburn. From calling nothing to calling everything. Yeah. The vagaries of the referee. 
DeMarchi will send it out. Junior from Hudson, Ohio and Walsh Jesuit High School. Flicked forward by the Commodores. That will get over the touchline and a throw coming up for Vanderbilt. Tigers have held their opponents scoreless for the last 240 minutes. And Auburn makes the substitution as Rocio Sanders comes in and replaces Ange Daly. Back-to-back -back shutouts for the Tigers. And almost 30 minutes of this match thus far against a team averaging 2.27 goals per match in Vanderbilt. The throw for the Commodores deep in their offensive third. It's Olivia Simmons with the ball, and she's got a long throw, Andy. Sophomore out of Rockledge, Florida. Indeed. Foles clears for Auburn. And there's Milanson for the Tigers. We'll drop it back to LeBeau. Let's rethink things. Commodores. Acock sends it forward. And now back to DeMarchi. It's not a bad ball by Trevor if Haley's on the same page and already running, but a little miscommunication. Dorsey against Foles, who deflects it out. The throw to midfield. Lansan almost whiffed on that one. It's a classic example of where Auburn is mentally right now. Again, her intent was just to lump it back in. Probably needs to calm down a little, switch that ball through Gianna Montini, a trustworthy holding center mid. Schamberger will send that one all the way out over the end line. Azari was the closest Vanderbilt player to that one. Another substitution for Auburn. Commodores all season long, almost unscored upon this season in the first half. Just two goals all year long in the first half. You know, when you keep the ball as much as they are, it's hard for other teams to generate much attack. Jesse Giroux, by the way, the uh, Auburn player into the match, replacing Haley Whitaker. A foul at midfield against Vanderbilt will give Auburn the ball. Jesse's been known to come in off the bench and produce quick goals, and Auburn certainly wouldn't argue with that now. Foul starting to even up a bit. Foal, excuse me, Dedells unable to keep that at her feet. Now Hopkins with Simmons racing forward. Hopkins near the top of the box. Goes wide for Azari. Working on Melanson, Azari. Drops it back to Saltmarsh. Serves it in, but too far, too high. It's a great overlap from inside out by Saltmarsh, but the, the service was not what she wanted. Really needed to curl that ball back in on the six, and it would have been really dangerous. Again, right idea, wrong execution. Sarah LeBeau. Vanderbilt in midfield. Salt Marsh. To the far side, Conti.
Hopkins. Trying to set up Simmons. And a throw coming up for the Commodores. Auburn has an opportunity here with 11 minutes left. When Simmons is in the game, Vanderbilt really transitions to a four-player midfield and push Simmons up top between their two strikers. And so Auburn has an opportunity to actually take control of the midfield here if they can recognize it and take it. Simmons twice the SEC Freshman of the Week a year ago. Sophomore from Rockledge, Florida. And she turns throw-ins into set pieces. Into the box. Cleared out by Bree Folds for Auburn. Run down by Nia Dorsey for the Commodores. Flicked on by Hopkins. Over the head of Conti, she's able to run it down and sends it to Schamberger. Freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia, and Westminster High School. Commodores with the possession. Under 10 minutes to go, first half. Hopkins into the box. Dorsey, ball is loose. And this is Gianna Montini. Now for Bree Folds. Nice job. Very calmly, Dorsey just steps in front of that pass intended for Acock and sends it over the touchline. Occasionally, Vanderbilt's three-back system will get a little too narrow and that big switch can catch them, but Dorsey's such a good athlete and reader of the game. She's able just to put that out of touch. Approaching the nine-minute mark of a scoreless first half. Sanders, Troutman, into the box. Giroux trying to turn. And Lauren DeMarchi gathers it in for the Commodores. 10, one, and one this season for the junior from Hudson, Ohio. Eight shutouts and the best save percentage in the SEC this year at 91.4%. She's only recently won the, the position full time. They've been swapping goalkeepers a half each game until the last three games when DeMarchi has really come out on top of that. Talking this week with Darren Ambrose, he said it was really tough to make a decision sure. on who was going to be that number one goalkeeper moving forward. Houchin getting pressure from Simmons. LeBeau goes down. And that's going to be a card against Simmons running into the Auburn goalkeeper. It's a yellow. Again, I don't think there was any intent at all, but that doesn't make a play not a dangerous play. And she hit her with such force, it almost flipped her over backwards. And the referee really didn't have much choice. Again, there's really no intent. But when you come in at that, yeah. OK, maybe a little intent. <laughs> but, but that right hand, there was some intent, I believe. Yeah, Sarah's been hit harder than that. It's all good. <laughs> Referee did what he had to do. Acock trying to get possession there. That's been tough for Auburn tonight. It sure has. And again, Auburn has got to, and I'm sure Coach Hoppe will make some adjustments at halftime. They've got to recognize where they can build up, which is in these outside deep flank positions. Taylor Troutman, Alyssa Melanson, that's where they're generating their attack from. Acock will come out for head coach Karen Hoppe. And a throw coming up for Vanderbilt. Tiger head coach honored before tonight's game for her 300th career win. Her 20th season at Auburn. 26 seasons overall. Simmons. And again, the deep throw coming up from Olivia Simmons. box 
on a head right to LeBeau. Third shot of the night for the Commodores. Second save of the night for Sarah LeBeau. Low line drive pass forward. Sanders gathers it in for Auburn. Acock for Troutman. Pokes it through. Sanders. And Auburn to its back line. Houchin. Near sideline for Melanson. Pass one Vanderbilt player, not the second. Oh, a whistle and a foul. Continuation. Official letting it go until Vanderbilt had control of the, the ball and a set piece for Auburn. Created by Auburn's patient buildup all the way to their back line, switch to the other side. Vanderbilt had every player behind the ball. They're very disciplined. That's Auburn's recipe. Folds. Tried to get it onto the forehead of uh, Giroux. Who had the best shot at that one. Excellent ball. Auburn needed to stack a few players a little wider and crash in. But an excellent opportunity created by some patient buildup. Approaching the five minute mark, remaining in the first half, DeMarchi. Not a very deep ball by DeMarchi to the feet of Bree Folds. Archie has to come out. Is that Silvano Poulter putting the pressure on that time? I believe it was, number it sure 15. Sure was. Fresh wheels almost yeah. got in on that ball. There's Silvana. Milan sign. There's some pressure. Foles trying to make the turn against Saltmarsh. Through two Vanderbilt players. Forward, Sanders. Wide for Silvana Poulter. Closing in on the flank. Into the box. Giroux drops it back. It's cleared out. Craven for Auburn. Pokes it forward for Troutman. Commodore is able to withstand. And now the counter, no, no counter, to the Auburn back line and through to LeBeau. And you've seen Auburn grow into this game in the last seven or eight minutes. A little bit of possession does a body good. And Auburn is right back in it. This will be an interesting halftime talk for both coaches. Houchin. Jero had it briefly to the back line of the Commodores. Near side, Eberts. Milan son, trying to get to this one. And Auburn will get its first corner of the night. Well, they're going to give the ball to Vanderbilt. Well, it sure looked like that was off of the Commodores last. Well, if we had the right camera angle, I think it probably did go off of Alyssa, but she Let's did take protest. A look. Really hard to see. Sure is. Gianna Montini, Giroux, folds. Now to Giroux, Jesse goes wide, Poulter in traffic. And the Commodores use their numbers, but Foles comes out of it and the foul whistled against Auburn. Bodies flying everywhere for both teams. The referee, and, and, and there's where I don't understand. There's there's a no call initially. Mm. Yeah, it's 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 hard to understand. Commodores 
with a minute 40 to go in the half. Maintain the pressure. And now over the touchline and out. That was Peyton Cutshall, the freshman out of Humble, Texas. I don't think it appeared Coach Hoppe understood it any more than we did. <laughs> Got pulled back to her bench by one of her faithful coaches. Houchin. Pass Simmons and through everyone. Approaching one minute remaining in the first, a scoreless first half. Which Vanderbilt played to a 0-0 draw in double overtime last week against South Carolina. And it was a, a kind of a reverse situation. South Carolina was so dominant early on, and then Vandy grew into that game really, really nicely, much as Auburn is doing right now. Troutman. Auburn trying just to clear it across midfield. And part of that, there's, there's 30 seconds to go, and you do not want to give up a goal. Is there one chance left for either of these two teams? It does eight, not appear so. Nine, eight, Final 10 seconds. Seven, six, it will be a scoreless five, first four, half three, of soccer. Two, one, zero. Auburn and Vanderbilt scoreless after one. The Commodores have only given up eight goals this season, third best in the SEC. Auburn hasn't given up a goal in the last 245 minutes. Well, something's got to give in the second half or we're headed to overtime, and uh, I'm not sure either team wants that on a Thursday night game. Auburn and Vanderbilt scoreless at the half from the Auburn University Soccer Complex on the SEC Network. 